there, I'm Eitan, and welcome back to the Wix Wiz. Today we're going to have a nice quick tutorial showing you how to pre-populate a Wix form with the logged in members data in order to save time and give a much better form filling experience to your users. So if you want to learn all that and more, let's get started. For this demo, as you can see, I am starting off with a blank page. The only thing that I've done already is I've installed the Wix members app on this website. And you can see here that I've added in a login bar so that we can easily sign up for a new account and log in. Because essentially what we're going to be doing is we are going to be connecting between the data of the logged in member or data that's associated with the logged in member and a form on our website. And for this demonstration, I'm going to be using a Wix form but you can apply the principles that I'm showing you here to a custom form that you build as well. Um, so let's go ahead and add a Wix form to our site. So I'm gonna go over here to add elements and I'm going to look here in the list for contact and forms right over here. And I'm going to add one of these application forms in. So let me just add that into the site. And it might take an, a moment here to add to the page. And once it does, I can arrange it on the page. So let's go over here I'm going to drag it a little down and that looks good. Okay. So this is the form that we're going to want to connect to the member data. And essentially we're going to want to associate between, let's say the email and the email of the current logged in member. And if they have given us their first name, last name, phone number, then we'll want to pre-fill those as well all in order to save the person filling out the form some time and give them a better user experience and hopefully get better conversions on this form, more people filling out the form. Um, so what we're going to need to do is the first thing is we're going to need to get the current member using code, and then we're going to associate that data with these inputs that we have over here. So let's hop in and do that. So the first step to adding code to our website will be to turn on dev mode. So you'll want to go up here to the top left and click this button right over here, turn on dev mode. And this demonstration I'm doing currently in the classic Wix editor, but everything that I'm showing you here can be easily applied to the newer editors such as Editor X and Wix Studio as well. Once we have activated dev mode, you'll see here that we have this code panel added in here on the bottom. This is where we're gonna be, where we're gonna be writing most of our code. And in order to know what code we should be writing, uh, I always like to refer to the Velo reference or the documentation. And we're going to be using this uh, Wix members front end package here, and specifically the current member part of it. And once we get this current member using get member, you'll see here that it will return data, including a lot of data points regarding our members, so such as their login email and information about their profile. Let me zoom in over here. So you can see here that we can uh, get their, um, uh, their nickname. And let's see, we can also get their contact details. So first name, last name, and phone numbers. So basically all of that data that we wanted to populate into our form. Obviously, this is under the condition that you have already collected this data from the member. Okay, so if your member has never given you this information before, uh, you will not be able to use it. So let me head over uh, back to the editor. And here we're going to be writing our code. So I'm going to just get rid of some of this, some of these instructions that Wix automatically gives on a new page. And what we're going to do here first thing is we're going to import up here current member from the package. So I'm going to say import current member from Wix members front end. And now essentially we can use that inside of our code. So I'm going to go down here under our on ready, and I'm going to create a new asynchronous function. And I'm going to call this populate, or we'll call it pre populate form. Okay, and that is going to be the function that essentially gets our member data. And assigns it to the different inputs in the form. So the first step of this is obviously going to be to get the member data. So let's go ahead and do that right over here. So I'm going to say const member equals to await.
current member dot get member. And then I'm going to add in here a console log, console dot log, member, member, just so that when I demonstrate to you later on, we'll be able to see what that member um, actually looks like, uh, what data that we actually get back from that um, API. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to associate part of the uh, member's data with the form. And the first thing I'm going to do is associate the email, because that is something that I know that we definitely get from every single member that signs up will definitely have an email address. So first thing I'm going to do is zoom out here. And I'm going to select the input on our form that is for the email. And you'll see here that currently it's called just input three. So what I'm going to do here is go into my code here on the side, and I'm going to rename this to be email input. And now I can access that under that name in my code. So I'm going to head back here to our function and I'm going to select that element. So email input dot value. And I'm going to say that that equals to member dot login email. OK, and then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to call our function prepopulate form. And I'm going to do one more thing, and that is that if we don't get a member back here inside of our function, I'm going to return from the function. And essentially that will be like a quick exit from the function and say, okay, there's no current logged in member. So you don't need to do all the rest of this stuff in the function. And the reason behind that is because if we don't have a logged in member, we can't really pre-populate um, any of the inputs because we don't know who's actually viewing the form. So I'm going to say, if no member, then what we're going to do is we're going to return essentially exit the function. So let me just format my code here. And it's looking pretty good. So I'm going to do a first test. So I'm going to go ahead and publish the site. And I'm going to open up the live site so that we can see if this is actually working. Okay, so here I am on the live site. And as you can see, nothing is currently pre filled. And that makes a lot of sense because I don't currently have a member that is logged in. So let me just check out the console here and see what we got back for member. So you can see here that we got back member undefined. Okay, and that's essentially why we don't have any auto population of the form. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new member account, log in and then refresh this page to show you what it would look like if we had a member logged in. Okay. So here I am back on our live site page. And as you can see, I'm currently logged in as a Tom plus tester two. Uh, with this email address, which has pre populated in the form. And if you don't believe me, I'm going to go ahead and I'll refresh this page so you can see it reloading. And you'll see that the page loaded automatically with my email here inside of the form. Uh, let's take a look at our console logs and see what member data we got back here. So here we have our member. Let me open this a little wider. Here we have our member. So let me open up this object. And you can see here that we have some of the contact details. So we have the email and I don't really have any other contact info here because I've only really just signed up for this website. So I have a login email and I have a password, but I don't have any additional data that we can use here to populate the form. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to head over to my member area inside of the site and add in some more information to my profile. Uh, this could also be information that you collect via another contact form on your site. And once a member is logged in and you collect contact information about them, then that should associate with their member as well. And you should be able to pull that data in here as well. So let me go ahead and fill in a little extra data so we have what to work with. And we'll work on populating some of the other fields of the form. Okay, so here I am on my account page, and I went ahead and I updated some of the basic info. So now I have a first name, a last name and a phone as well. So this is stuff that we hopefully can tap into uh, with our um, the data. And I'm going to go back to our autofill form. I'll refresh this page and head here into the console, just so that we can see and verify that we actually have this data now. So if I open up here profile, so I can see, okay, so I don't see first name and last name here. Let me check out the contact details. So here we can see now that I have first name here and I have last name and I have phones. 
Okay, so this is where we're going to be pulling in that information that we're going to be populating into our form. So let me head back to the editor. And what we need to do first is we need to name these additional fields. So I'm going to select this field right over here, originally called input five, I'm going to call it first name input, and you can call it whatever you want, as long as it's easier for you to identify this input in the code. Uh, and I'm going to select now the uh, last name input. And I'm going to change that here as well. So that's going to be last name input. And I'm going to select the phone. And I'm going to call that phone input. Okay, so now we've set up all of our inputs uh, and given them significant uh, names. So I'm going to head back here into our function. And we're going to do something similar to what we did with the email input. So I'm going to select the first name and say dot value, and that should be equal to member dot contact details dot first name. And for the last name input, so last name input dot value value equals to member dot contact details dot last name. Um, and we're going to do last but not least the phone number. So let me select the phone input dot value value equals to member dot contact details dot phones. And this you have to remember was an array. Okay, if I go back to the data that we had over here, so we can see here that phones is an array. And somebody might have several phone numbers. So here you'll kind of have to decide, okay, which phone number do I want to use? I'm going to just assume that we're going to use the first phone number in the array. So in order to do that, sorry, head back to the editor, and I'm going to select here phones zero. Okay, and since this phone number is a number, at least I, I think it was, I'm just going to verify that it is actually converted into a string because Wix inputs need to take uh, string values. So I'm going to just convert this to string. And with that, we should be good. So I'm going to go ahead and publish my site and go to our autofilled form. And I'm going to refresh this page. And now you can see that my first name, last name, email and phone are all filled out. Obviously, a user can still go ahead and make changes to this, but it definitely saves me a lot of time because now all I need to do is add the unique fields to this form and I don't need to go filling out all of my plain old details. Um, so I hope that you found this tutorial useful. Uh, if you did, don't forget to like uh, and subscribe so that you can see more videos like this every week. Uh, if you have any questions or more content that you'd like to see that you want to suggest, please uh, leave that information in the comments below, and I'll see you next time.